Come back with Kevin and Jimmy. KNEC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Full throttle from Hillbilly Harrow as a leadoff track from their debut CD came out a few years ago. Uh, please help me welcome to the show Kevin and Jimmy. Guys, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks doing for good. thanks for having us. Well, thanks for thanks for coming down. I know it's a little little early for for rock and roll uh, in this uh, bright sunny day that we have, but hey, you made it down, so I appreciate that. Yeah, we made it. Thanks for having us. <laughs> so. Diving in, uh, we'll, we'll get into the Sunset Strip Fest, the show that you're doing at the uh, Viper Room. 
uh, before the pure rockers that aren't familiar with Hillbilly Herald. Touch on the origins of the band, how you came across Kevin, because obviously on the CD, the self-titled CD, uh, you had a different drummer. So if you could just sort of touch on the origins of Hillbilly Herald. We actually had Tommy Clefettis from Ozzy play on the record. And uh, at the time, we didn't ha we had fired the drummer before we did the record that we had. And uh, we were kind of in the studio doing our thing, and, and Clefettis had stumbled across the club. And then he came back in and said, I found this drummer, man, and he's, he's going to fit your band perfectly. And uh -huh. That's how we... He brought Kevin in, and that, that's how we got Kevin. So it was just like that. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it kind of fell together pretty, yeah. pretty good, you know. As soon as he came in, we had been auditioning drummers, but as soon as he came in, we knew that and, was the one. And I met Tommy. I met Tommy a long time ago, and he had been doing a, uh, a resident jam every Thursday at the Cat Club, now defunct. And uh, uh, one thing led to another. I ended up sitting in, and Tommy the next day gave me a phone call and asked me if I would be interested in coming down for an audition, and that's pretty much what led to that. I, I, it was. We knew as soon as we played the one song, I mean, because we'd auditioned all these drummers, and it's crazy in L.A. Like, how many people come into audition and didn't even learn the tunes? You know what I mean? And he came in, knew the tunes. Mm -hmm. He was into it, and it just. We went right out on the road right after that. Yeah. We didn't even know each other. We were in a band. A week later, out doing gigs. You know what I mean? Three yeah. weeks. Three weeks. We did uh, three weeks of rehearsal, record release, and then uh, another two weeks after that, we were on the road. Sweet. See, this is the type of band Pure Rockers that doesn't have, like, a Learjet. You're going to see them in cramming a van, cramming a van with their gear and sweating it out in the clubs across the U.S. of A. So no uh, no, go no gold stream. No There's no American Idol money behind this band. This is the real deal. <laughs> uh, again, Pure Rockers, Jimmy Harold and Kevin Kapler of Hillbilly Herald joining me uh, here in the studio. Now, rounding out the group is Mark Hill and Adam Wolf. Mark on guitar and Adam on bass. Now, uh, Jimmy, you met them here in Los Angeles, correct? I actually met Mark in Austin, Texas. We worked at a car wash together. Oh. And then we were like, uh, let's go to L.A. So we came out to L.A. and, just and then like, just started like a band. And that was that's just how it happened. You know, we we wanted to do a... Uh, I actually, I got tired. You know, the 90s was kind of a little boring to me. I wanted some more rock and roll. So I was mm -hmm. like, let's just start a band and give it a shot and put out a record like, you know, that we like mm -hmm. and see what happens. And, you know, it's got really good response. So that's how it happened. And then we met Adam, obviously, put him in the band. We actually added a new guy. We have Hawaiian Brian now. That's on right. Guitar. That's right. You're, you're friends with him, too. Yeah, yeah. Brian, another solid player, added it to the bunch. And technically, um, I, you've probably played shows since then, but uh, last time I saw... Hillbilly Herald was opening for Danko Jones at the Troubadour. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So he added sort of like a you know sort of you know some the added element of not only solos but just you know beef up the sound. That was his like uh, first first go around. I think we only had like what two weeks rehearsal and we were like Maybe. we're gonna open for Danko Jones. He's like, well you know what's crazy is one time we were doing a sound check. We played the Troubadour before that, mm -hmm. and we and Adam was late and we needed somebody to sound check Adam's bass and Hawaii, Brian was just happened to be there. Okay. And we had him sound check it, and he was like, man, you know, maybe one day I'll get to play here. And the next time we played there, he was in the band was playing the guitar, shooter, so yeah. that's that's how that happened. The planet, right place, right time. Right, exactly. The planets were aligned that day. Unbelievable. Kevin Kapler, Jimmy Harold of Hillbilly Harold joining me in studio. Uh, guys, let's dive into another track from your debut CD, and we'll we'll talk some more. Perfect. All right? That's good. Pure Rockers, rock and roll. It's yeah. all I want to do, and that's all I want to do here on The Vault. Come back with Talk With Boys. You're listening to theloudest.com on the planet, knac.com. <laughs>
Rock, yes. Pure Rock, KNEC.com, the loudest dot com on the planet. Hillbilly Herald, a rock and roll is all I want to do. And I'm back with Kevin and Jimmy from the band. That, that is always a fan favorite, at least in, in my book, because uh, I've seen you guys a bunch of times. So, oh, yeah. We're going to get into uh, one of the newer tracks and also get into what else uh, you guys are working on in the meantime. Uh, you have a gig at the Viper Room uh, during the Sunset Strip Music Fest. Technically, this is uh, your second year in a row. Is that correct, guys? Second year, yes. We did the Cat Club last year, and this year they moved us up to the Viper Room, yes. Nice, nice. Let me ask you a question, uh, uh, guys. This is uh, something I, I tend to ask the musicians that play in and around you know, the Strip and just clubs in general here in, in L.A., how do you how do you make strides to circumvent the pay to play aspect? Because that's one that's one aspect that has really never gone away in the last twenty some years. I've been going to clubs here. I'd like to know from your perspective if you've had to deal with it. If so, give me a horror story. But if not, what has been the one thing that you've tried to do to avoid getting that stigma attached to Heel Billy Harold? Let me tell you something. I for the rest of your life as a band, you will pay to play in some aspect or another. So when they tell you that you've got to pay to play, you've got to earn your, you know, you've got to earn your wings, so to speak. If you got, they just want to make sure that your band is, is going to, you know, do the work and bring the people in. But it, it will grow into different levels. First, you'll put the money up and then you'll sell the tickets and then you'll sell the tickets and you'll get the money. But, you know, even when we, we did this tour, you know, to Indiana, the Midwest, you know, I put all the money up myself. I made it all back, but it, you're always going to pay to play. If you play the, the Staples Center, you still got to, you know, you still yeah. got to pay to play. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's just what it is. So that word is kind of, or that whole little whatever that is, is kind of tricky, but it, it, it's part of it. You know, you have to pay to play. Well, it's definitely putting it, you know, pay your dues, yes. blood, sweat, and tears, and you reinvest back into your band yes. uh, with what you make. But uh, figuratively pay to play is one thing but just how a lot of the club uh, booking agents go about this practice where they just don't I look at it as not having faith in the bands that they book to bring in crowds your right. music should be able to sell yourselves alone word of mouth would have you right how the live performance is because with Hillbilly Herald it's no frill stripped down rock roll and that's the attitude I appreciate that's the one thing that always will get my attention more than some big show spectacle smoke bombs all that it's the it's just the no bullshit attitude yes. rock band unfortunately though you got to weed through the shit you know oh. there are a lot of bands who will just go play the viper room just to say they play the viper room and not bring any people like it's a rehearsal which makes no sense to me i don't understand that mm -hmm. so i you know it, it's it, it it goes out on both ends there you know it's like once you've earned or paid your dues, they see through the shit, too, eventually, and they're like, all right, we need them now because they can put asses in the seats, and then you'll get paid, you know? Yeah. If you're worth the shit, you'll put your money where your mouth is, mm -hmm. you know? You have to. You have to work You have to work for it. Yeah. I mean, no question. I mean, you guys are fortunate enough to get gigs. Um, now we're getting gigs. Now we're now, getting now right. we're getting gigs. But at the beginning, like I said... A little tough go. It was tough go, man, you know, yeah. but we toughed it out, and, you know... We did it. We sold our tickets. And now, now we can actually sell tickets without going out and standing on the street and selling tickets. You know All what right. I mean? Yeah. And Kevin, a question for you: When you've uh, played with other bands and you've done a lot of jam things here and there, did you do that to stick to keep busy until something solid came along to keep your chops up? Well, always, always as a musician, you want to you want to stay in the eye of of whoever's going to be giving you your next gig to. To be in the forefront of somebody's mind, to, for somebody for to think of you for a gig, you got to play in front of them. You also got to do your work. You can't suck. <laughs> so yeah, and and again, playing playing at every opportunity possible. You know, your chops get built up. There, but there are many different chops. Not just playing. It's being in a musical situation on stage, and going for a train wreck. And you know, it's going to train wreck. But it's like getting it back on the rails you yeah. know that's that living on the edge and you gotta you gotta do it to know how to get through it mm -hmm. no question kevin kapler jimmy harold of hillbilly harold again coming up at the sunset strip music fest round number two at the viper room have any any record company and our horror stories for those that have come out to see you from the the industry 
that'll sort of give you a, a couple of uh, pointers, a couple of two cents to say, we want to, want to do something with your band, but... We we have. We actually went, we had Atlantic Records call, and they were really interested in, you know, and I think they wanted to go the route where we needed to paint our fingernails and, and do this and do that, and I was like, fuck that. Really? You know, I would much rather do what we're doing than, than have to do what, you know, I, I can go get a job and have somebody tell me what to do. You know, that's, that's right. the, the whole idea of starting a rock band is, is expressing yourself and being yourself, you know, so... We, you know, we did have that. We were signed right out of the gate. We got out of that deal, thank God. So now we're kind of just we're doing it, you know. We're just doing it. We're not really looking for that. We're, we're looking for a good tour to get on and get our band out there. And maybe we could be a band that does it themselves, you know what I mean? Obviously, you're not doing it all by yourself because you need the support of sure. a tour. But right. I, that's my goal is to do it hillbilly herald's way you know i know i mean it's a do-it-yourself work ethics that's something that it's almost like the punk rock work ethics of yes you know do for self as much as you can until you're having to call and email the club owners across you know across the nation hey we're coming through town uh you got room for us yes you know we're not asking for you know 15 deli trays and big ass guarantees and we want this much stay it's like drop the attitude come in with playing attitude Yes. Let the music do the talking, because at the end of the day, it's the only thing that's going to sell. You have to make your audience believe and win them. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're true and you're real, and they, they see, I mean, you know, we can see through the bullshit nowadays. You know, how much, they put so much shit in front of us so quick, so fast, it's like, who's still here? Yeah. There's only a handful of them still here, man, and that's because they're, they're, they, stay, they stay true to it, you know? Yeah. And those are the people that we want to surround ourselves with, you know? Long staying power. Tell me about uh, what you're working on now. We're going to play a, a, a more newer track from Hillbilly Herald in just a second. Uh, set up this track for me, but also tell me what you guys are currently uh, working on right now besides the, show, the upcoming show at the Viper Room. We are actually recording. We're working with, um, with Bob Kulik right now. Okay. We're going to do a new EP, and we're taking our time with this one. We're actually you know, being produced on this, this record. And when I say produced, I don't mean like... It's not going to be pop. It's still going to be rock. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're stretching ourselves a little bit. We want to make, obviously, you want to go up a, little, a level every time you put out a record. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that. And then this single that you're going to hear now, Greedy Me, was actually done with Chris Baseford, which I think is an amazing track. You know? oh, I, absolutely. It's, it's the, thumping. The track was recorded, and, and, you know, me being a drummer, I was like a kid in a candy shop. We were, uh, we were recording at Tommy Lee's st home studio. Yeah, it's Got pretty to, cool. I mean... Just an unbelievable experience, and, and the track speaks for itself. There you have it. Greedy me. KNAC.com. Hillbilly Harold. Come back with we'll Kevin and Jimmy.
Pure Rock, KDC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Greedy. Greedy me. Hillbilly Herald. More recent track from Hillbilly Herald, and I'm back with Kevin and Jimmy from the band. It's available for free on the website, and there's a video for it. Set that up for me. Actually, it's a video game. Video game, correct. Instead of doing a music video, we had a video game made, and you uh, get all four members of the band to the show, and it unlocks the single. <laughs> so who's the HTML web wizard that came up with that one? Uh, actually, uh, his, uh, Randy Osborne. He was my neighbor at the time. Randy Osborne? Yeah, yeah. No no relation to Ozzy Osborne. What are the chances? Uh, yeah, right. I asked. No, he didn't know. No. But uh, anyway, uh, he built it for us. It was you know My brother came up with this crazy idea. We should make a video game. So yeah, we, Everybody else does a music video and do something new. Yeah, we, we, You have to actually get off your ass and earn this one. <laughs> you can't just sit back and watch it. There you go, a little interactive, a little uh, fan interaction that way. There you have it. Again, more information, go to hillbillyherald.com, see what we're talking about. You also catch them on Facebook as well. Now, the the CD, um, the CD, the official CD that came out a few years ago, now that's available on iTunes, Rhapsody, Amazon.com, and Napster still, correct? Yes. All right, excellent. So this EP that you're working on, could take your time with it. Now, do you hope to have it out later this year or... Just sort of play it, see how it goes. I'm in no hurry. Okay. I'm in no hurry. You know, I, I said Christmas, but if it comes out, you know, or a little after Christmas, then I'm good. We're, you know, I really want these songs to, like, yeah. I want to dig really deep on this one and, good. and get in there. Now, the, the songs that will eventually be on the EP, are they uh, mixed in with the live show? Have they been mixed in with the live show? Or are these just... No, we yeah, we actually we have done a couple of different versions of Sucker Punch, which we're recording right now, live. Okay. okay. But now it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So we do try them out before you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be actually playing Sucker Punch at the Sunset Music Festival. And we have another song called Shame on Me, which we pulled off the uh set list because we're gonna rework that one. But okay. we Sucker Punch is ready to go now. Cool, cool. Now with um well, with the forthcoming E P and you know, with digital distribution and putting it out there, you just want the fans to hear it. That's what it boils down to. Yes. So, yes. not like, and I, your attitude of I'm not in a hurry is a good one because there's no hard deadline. It's not like, we must get this to the A&R guy. We must get this to the label by such and such stage because he wants to get it. It's like, no rules. I am the A and R guy. I right mean, now. the only <laughs> self-contained. I like that. Go ahead, Kevin. The only thing you really want to do is just ballpark it. You know, have it ready and and shop it before tour time. That's really the only schedule to keep to. But that's even if you want to. Our, our major goal is to get this done this year and be on a, a a big tour by next year. We want to open for somebody that, you know, we want to get out of. We want to go to the next next level and get on a big tour. You know. Nice somebody. Solid, nice solid uh, national act. That would yes, be awesome. That's that's our goal. How long have you been out in Los Angeles? I've know? been I mean I think I've been here at least 10, 10 11 years now. Okay. Yeah, about eleven years. Okay. And Kevin, you're for originally from New York, right? Originally from New York, uh, um, moved out here four years ago. Yeah. Just about four years ago. Yeah. And I kinda met you like kinda like right when you Right were... off right off the boat, man. I mean right. I was here for, for two months and I got uh I got sucked into a jam and uh -huh. You know, and and it was one thing led to another, and just met some really great people out of it, including everybody that's sitting in this room. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to our discussion about the Cat Club, which was a popular hang during the week and especially during Sundays, and you know, it was a favorite haunt. Unfortunately, now going to be a uh, some type of sports bar, uh, I guess. Uh, well, but... if you if you drive, <laughs> yeah, we need another one of those. Uh, Irish pub food, no live music to my knowledge. So uh, everybody, go and don't enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this place is right next to the whiskey. For those of you out of state and out of country, here in the Sunset Strip, the whiskey, obviously a fixture on the scene. It, the scene is not what it used to be, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So all these changes going around where there's less and less venues for these musicians to play. But you know what? You make do with what you have to work with. So it is what it is. But uh, the reason we wax and wane on about the Cat Club, that was a lot of great rock and roll uh, there. Again, full lineup, Adam Wolf on bass, Mark Hill on guitar, both gentlemen backing vocals, Kevin Kapler on drums, and the occasional vocal, and Mr. Frontman himself, No Holds Barred, Paps Blue Ribbon Soaked, Jimmy Harold. HillbillyHerald.com for more information. Again, a local band uh, making do here in the scene and been slugging out for some time. Uh, really good guys. And like I said, Pure Rockers, you know my show, been doing this almost 10 years. It's a lot of power, speed, and thrash metal. Every so often, I like to throw you a curveball. And for a band that uh, appreciates not only the fans, but 
appreciates what they do and re- has a realistic aspect when dealing with the the underworld of the business here in lovely Los Angeles. So, Hillbilly Harold wanted to have him on. Uh, Kevin and Jimmy, thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hey, and by the way, we have Hawaiian Brian, too, in this band. Oh, I almost, almost, it's almost. not in print. It's not in print yet, <laughs> but he's listening. So, Hawaiian Brian, you're still in. Hey, Brian, you almost got Jack there, my man. So, my apologies. Fifth member, Mr. Hawaiian Brian. Five is my lucky number. It's a good number. There you go. So what I'm going to do, uh, guys, I want to close with one of my favorite tracks of yours. Pure Rockers, this is Yellow Belly.
KNEC.com, the loudest dot com on the planet. I want to thank Kevin Kapler and Jimmy Harold from Hillbilly Harold. That was Yellow Belly, uh, one of uh, my favorite tracks from the band. And again, don't forget Purocris for those of you in SoCal. 11 o'clock on the 19th of this month at the Viper Room. Hillbilly Harold will be playing there during the Sunset Strip Music Fest. Again, more information, go to ssmf.com.